Hello students, today we're looking at double shifts in supply and demand. So we developed the basics earlier, we looked at individual shifts. Sometimes though, more than one thing changes at a time, and you still got to be able to analyze those more complex situations. So here's the key to do that. The first thing you do is look at each situation, each shift separately. And we'll create a table, looks like this, to look at the effects. So first we'll draw an up arrow for price if price goes up. If price is going down, instead we'll draw a down arrow there. And then we'll do the same for quantity. So up arrow means quantity rises, down arrow means quantity falls. Do the same thing for the second shift. Lastly, look at this column here overall is going to just combine that information. So let's go look at some examples. So back in the Great Recession, the expected price on mortgage-backed security was falling. So a lot of people were defaulting on their mortgages. So an asset that's backed by a mortgage becomes less valuable if the borrower is not paying it back. So the expected value of these things was decreasing. So how is it going to affect the market for mortgage-backed securities? We go to our factors of what shifts which curves. Price expectations shift both demand and supply. That's how I know there's going to be a double shift. So I'll pick one to start with, and then we'll go through that, and then we'll turn to the other shift. Lastly, we'll combine them. So let's talk about the demand side first. Investors pay money up front to buy the MBS, the mortgage backed security, because they believe they'll be paid back by the borrowers who are repaying their mortgage. Now, if borrowers are defaulting, then the investor doesn't get paid. So you pay a bunch of money for this asset that's not paying you back. So investors don't like that. Investors are going to decrease their demand for mortgage-backed securities. And also if we try to resell something that is in default, it's going to be hard to find a buyer. So investors on the demand side are going to shy away from buying mortgage-backed securities. So demand shifts back. Demand is originally here at D0, which gives us this price and this quantity. That then changes when demand shifts back. It's going to be over here at D1. Here's our new equilibrium price and new equilibrium quantity. So price has fallen and quantity has also fallen. That's why I draw two down arrows here for price and quantity when I look at the first shift. So that's how the demand side is affected. Now we will turn to the supply side. So investors who currently own a mortgage-backed security would like to get rid of it now while it still has a high price. They expect the price to fall in the future. So if you hold on to the asset and wait until later to sell it, you're not going to be able to get as much money for it. Sell now while the price is high. That's going to increase the supply of mortgage-backed securities. So supply shifts out to S1 from S0. Here's what that does to price and quantity. Old equilibrium is where demand meets the old supply curve. That's here at P0 star. The new supply curve meets demand out over here. Price has now gone down to P1 star. So price goes down. So get another down arrow here for price. Quantity is going to go up. Old equilibrium is back here, which means we have this quantity. New equilibrium is going to be 
over here, which gives you a bigger quantity. So quantity is going up, that gets an up arrow in our table. So that's how we do the individual shifts. Now we gotta put them together. So for price, the first shift caused price to fall. The second shift also caused price to fall. That means price has to be going down overall. So in general, when the shifts go in the same direction, then the effect overall is clear. With quantity though, it's gonna be ambiguous. Our first shift caused quantity to go down. Second shift caused quantity to go up. They're going in opposite directions. We don't know which effect is stronger. Common misconception here, a lot of my students assume that the shifts will cancel out. That's not necessarily true. One shift could be bigger than another. And we just don't know, we don't have enough information right now to determine if they cancel out fully or if one's bigger than the other. So the overall effect on quantity is gonna be unclear. That's why I put a question mark in the table for that. And I'll show you on a graph why it's unclear. So I'll draw a graph for each case. There are two possibilities. In one case, quantity goes up overall, and the other possibility, quantity goes down overall. So in our top graph, I drew a big supply shift and a smaller demand shift. So we're starting out on old supply. That's here, S0. And we have old demand, D0. So they meet over here, that's our old equilibrium. When supply shifts, supply goes out here to S1. Demand shifts brings us out here at D1. Where do they meet? That's going to be right over here. So that new quantity, Q1 star, is bigger than the original quantity. So in this case, quantity overall rose. Supply shift was bigger than demand shift, and supply caused quantity to go up. So overall quantity goes up. Now, that's not the only possibility. Remember I said the effect on quantity was overall unclear. What if we had seen a really big demand shift that overwhelmed the supply shift? In that case, you get a graph like this one down here. In the beginning, we're on old demand and old supply. So we're starting out over here where those two curves meet. We end up on new supply and new demand. They're gonna meet right over here. That gives us a quantity of Q1 star. As you can see, the new quantity, Q1, is smaller than the old quantity. So quantity could go down in this case, or quantity could go up in this first case. It's unclear. You need more information to know for sure. Now I did say the effect on price was clear cut said price should go down overall because both shift one and shift two both drag down prices. Both of our graphs reflect that. Price starts out up here at P0 and it goes down to P1. Price starts over here at P0, goes down to P1. So they're both showing a price fall. So that's how you analyze the um, mortgage-backed security example. Here's another example. Let's say a technology gets better and that makes farms more productive. At the same time, some people who are previously not farmers decide to get into the business. So you have two things moving on at the same time. So 
how is that going to affect the food market? So go through our process here and try to do your analysis. When you think you have the answer, press play. So pause the video here. All right, let's go through the procedure. So in our first part of the story, we had technology getting better. If you go to our list of factors, we said technology was a supply shifter. More people become farmers. Farmers are on the supply side of the food market, so that means there's going to be a larger number of firms producing food. Number of firms is also on the supply side. Therefore, we have two different factors shifting supply at the same time. We got to analyze each effect separately. So let's start out with the technology. If technology gets better, that makes firms more productive. So now farms can supply more food. That's going to shift the supply curve outwards. We start out here at S0. Once technology improves, we produce more. Now we're having supply at S1 instead. So here's our old equilibrium where demand meets old supply. So you have this price and this quantity. New equilibrium is out here. So we have this price and that quantity. So you read it off our graph, you can see that prices have fallen and quantity has risen. So you get a down arrow here for price. We have an up arrow for quantity. So that's the first shift. Now let's talk about the other part of the story. We said at the same time, more people become farmers. That expands the number of firms. So that's going to shift supply outwards. So these new farmers out there are producing food in addition to the old farmers and the old food that is being produced. That's going to expand supply. Supply shifts out. And now we're on S1 over here instead of S0. What does that do to our equilibrium? In the beginning, we're over here. Old supply meets demand. So we have this price, P0, and that quantity, Q0. Once supply shifts, we're going to be out here, and that meets demand at this point. Price is going to become P1, which is lower than P0. Quantity goes up to Q1. So price falls, demand rises. Sorry, price falls, quantity rises. Demand does not change. You see a movement along a demand curve, not a shift in a demand curve. Remember, a price change gives you movement along, not a shift. So that's shift number two. Now we have to go fill in the rest of our table by combining this information. So the first shift caused price to fall. The second shift also caused price to fall. That means price has to be going down overall. So they're both going in the same direction. That gives you a clear cut answer for the effect on price. Let's talk about quantity. Shift number one caused quantity to go up. Shift number two also caused quantity to go up. That means Q has to rise overall. Again, shifts going the same direction give you a clear answer. So there's only one possible case. Overall price falls, overall Q rises. So we have one graph to draw for that. So here's demand and here's the original supply curve. So technology causes supply shift out here to this green curve. We have more farmers supply shifts out again to this blue curve We're here at S2 now. So our equilibrium begins at old supply and at demand that's over here. 
this is old supply. We get this price and we get that quantity, P0, Q0. In the new equilibrium, we're on S2 over here, the new supply curve. That meets demand over here. That gives us this price, P2, and this quantity, Q2. So I ask compare, you see that P2 is lower than P0, so price went down as expected. Quantity is now Q2 instead of Q0. Quantity goes up also as expected. So let's do our next example in our next episode.